All right, everybody. So I'm going to be showing you Silhouette Studio to do an activity on how you might make a sticker with an electronic cutter at the Fab Lab. Uh, Silhouette Studio is available for free. It is put out by the Silhouette Company. Uh, they make the electronic cutters that we really like at the lab. Uh, you can download this for both Mac and Windows. It is, like I said, free. So just go ahead and Google Silhouette Studio, go ahead and hit download, and it should install without any major gripes or issues. Once you've launched it, it'll look something like this. Now, something to get used to with this is unlike Inkscape or Illustrator or some of these other kinds of programs, Silhouette Studio is very much related to a specific tool, the Silhouette Electronic Cutters. So if you zoom out here, I'm going to go ahead and go up to this little uh, minus hourglass, or you can hold down Alt and uh, Control, or I'm sorry, Alt and the uh, scroll wheel on the mouse. Uh, you can zoom out and you'll notice something. There's this canvas, this looks kind of funny. This is a square. It's a one foot by one foot square, and this is a mat. So actually this is simulating as if we had had an 8 inch by 12 inch sheet of paper on a mat. And you're going to be using a mat like this to actually put into the cutter to cut and design things. Uh, you could cut out vinyl, you can cut out paper, uh, the tools are capable of doing copper tape and, and fabric and all kinds of really cool things. Your mat will have an arrow and that's really important for knowing the angle at which you're going to be adjusting things to cut. Now, more than likely, if you're using the general open lab, we do have these regular silhouette cameos that are a one foot by one foot size. Uh, we can go up here. This is kind of hard to see. I'm going to, you can't really, I'm going to see if I can wiggle the mouse. There we go. By my big mouse there, that's the canvas or page settings. And we can go here to change this from cameo to portrait if we're using a portrait cutter. And likewise, you can adjust your width and height of the material you're using. So you might, for instance, be using a four inch by four inch square of vinyl. That's fine. Just adjust those things to four inch by four inch. And this is important. So this is less than the size of the entire mat. So you're going to want to paste that vinyl or put that vinyl down on the mat in that proper spot relative to the arrow and the square grid. Each of these squares is one inch by one inch, and it gives you a sense of how large things are. It's sometimes really nice also if you over here on the right, I can See, my, there's my big mouse. Uh, I can reveal the cutting mat beneath my material. So you can sort of see if you need to be exacting about the size of the material, you can do that. Okay, so Silhouette Studio acts a lot like Inkscape and other vector design tools in that it has a lot of the same kinds of tools and uh, 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 functions on the left. Uh, so you'll notice there's a rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle, ellipse, etc. Now there's a key difference though. The way the electronic cutter works is it basically just cuts red lines. So if I go ahead and go over here and pick my rectangle tool and I draw this, it draws this red outline of a rectangle. Uh, if I want to adjust this, just like in Silhouette, I go back up here to this arrow tool, what I sometimes call the best friend tool because you're always going to talk to it, and I can go select things after I've drawn them. Now, a thing that will happen to people a lot of the time is they're like, okay, I've drawn my rectangle, and they try to click in the middle of it, and they're like, I can't touch my rectangle. What is going on? The world is ending. It's because all this is is a red cut outline. There's nothing inside of it. It is just an empty outline of a shape. And that's because the silhouette cutter is just cutting red lines. That's all it does is it cuts the whole red line. And if I double click on that outline, we'll get what it's actually doing. So it's going to cut and take that blade. It, hits, it starts with one of these points, goes from that point to this point to this point to this point to this point. And it cuts out the square. That's how it's going to work. And this is very similar to Inkscape. Once I've double clicked on my object, uh, I have these, these corner nodes and things that I can adjust. So I can you know, mess around with this node if I wanted to. And uh, I can mess around with handles and other stuff that you might, that would be very similar to Inkscape. Now, most of the other tools in here, in principle, work very similarly. Uh, something that's really important to remember, if you were going to make a sticker or a paper cutout that looks something like this, what would happen is it would cut all of these red lines. So you wouldn't get like some big merged shape of uh, lots of, uh, of uh, you know, this it wouldn't cut out the outside of this. It would really, like, you'd have like, this piece inside of here, I don't know if you can see this, this would be a piece that would be cut out, this would be a piece that would be cut out, you know, they'd all fall apart as you took it apart. So if you wanted to merge these things, it does work a little bit different than Inkscape. So you have to select two objects at a time, I click on this one, and I hold down Shift and I click on this one, and I can right click on this, and I can go not to group, I know that's, that's tempting, but we actually want to weld it right here, right above that. We go to weld, and that welds them together, so now that's one solid shape. And I can do the same thing, two objects at a time only, and go to weld it. You have the same function in Inkscape also where if you wanted to punch a hole out of something, 
uh, if I want to put a hole in the middle of this, you could just draw it as is. But if I wanted these to all be one object, I can go up here to object and I should be able to do modify. Here we go. And uh, I can't remember if it's, I think it's subtract. There we go. That should have done it. And now if I drag this over the edge, yeah. So this is all one object. If I double click, you can see there's all of our nodes. <coughs> so sort of so many of the same kinds of functions you might see in Inkscape. Uh, if you're watching this tutorial, I've expected you to go through the Inkscape tutorial before it uh, just to get a sense of it. Now, the activity I'm going to show you today is what we call griffins. Now, when people hear griffin, they probably think of something that looks kind of like, let's let's go Google griffin and see what we get. Griffin. And we get lots of this guy. We'll go to images like this, you know, bird-lion combination thing. And that is a griffin, but actually in mythology, griffin can be the combination of multiple animals. So griffin stickers are the combination of two animals. So you're going to make up your own mythical animal for this assignment. <clears throat> so uh, for uh, to do that, what you can go ahead and do is put the word silhouette on the end of it. If you're not sure how to spell silhouette, Google will help you, but also it says it on the machine and in the software. I know it's one of those weird, hard to spell French words, but you know, they make it hard on us. So let's go ahead and do turtle. Actually, I already did a turtle. Let's do, oh, I don't know, a horse silhouette. So there I've searched for my horse silhouette. There are lots of horses, so I'll go ahead and grab this guy who's stampeding forward. And this is the same drill as Inkscape. You could drag it into the program. That may not work. Let's go ahead and save our image as, drop it on our desktop, and go back in here to Silhouette. I can just go to Open. You don't need to import. And we should be able to go to Desktop and open up our, let's see. Oh, I didn't label it this time. That was stupid. There's our horse. Okay. We pull in our horse. And we have our same raster graphic. And you'll notice the edges are blurry just like before. So we're going to actually trace this guy just like we did or similar to like we did in Inkscape. So I go ahead and shrink this down. I was, I was just able to click on the object. I can grab these boxes on the outside to shrink it and make it bigger. I can grab the green circle up here to rotate it if I want to. <coughs> and I can shrink this down to fit on my canvas. If this is off my canvas over here, the program will ignore it. It will not do anything to it. Also, this is an image file. It is not a red outside cut line. If you try to cut this image file, it just won't work. We need to turn this into something the silhouette can understand. It can't understand a mess of pixels that are various different colors. What it can understand is cutting from point to point to point to point. So we're going to turn this into a file type that is cutting from point to point to point. So we do that by going to the trace tool. So I've imported my image here. And in the upper right, there's this sort of blue looking butterfly. Come on, mouse wiggle. There we go. By my big mouse, there's that blue butterfly toast, whatever you want to call it, button up there. That will bring up the trace menu. Once we've clicked on that, we can go to select an area to trace. And we drag a big old box around the whole thing. Uh, it, a lot of uh, little kids have trouble with this where they draw a box and it's like this. And oh my god, they missed. What do they do? Well, you don't have to start over. You can just grab the bottom of the box and drag it all around. Now, do not hit trace yet. What it's doing right now is optimizing for a color graphic. Uh, it's using a high pass filter and it doesn't understand that this thing is just two colors, black and white. So if we go over here to turn off our high pass filter or you can adjust the value for it, we can cover the whole thing in yellow and that's our ideal. And once we've done that, we can go up to the in the upper right and go to trace. And if I click on my horse, look at that, we have a red cut outside line. And we can take the other black horse and delete it or move it off the canvas. Now our griffin needs to be a combination of two animals. So this is not good enough. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, we, we're going to need to adjust this to combine it with another animal. So we can go ahead and go out to the World Wide Web and come up with another animal. So now griffins maybe you know might have something like a you know, hawk head with wings. But I'm going to be crazier. We're going to do a squid because I'm weird. So oops, we have to say squid silhouette. Okay, here we go. Let's go for our images and, uh, oh, I don't know, we can use this squid as an image. I'm going to go ahead and save this image as on my desktop like before. Well, we can go ahead and, and again, you, you should uh, be able to open it just with this. There's going to be a little bit of work where we have to, I, ah, shucks, I didn't label it. All right, business card, horse, turtle. There's our squid. That's what I want. Okay. Now this opened in a different file. So on the bottom left here, you can see the tabs. So this, this squid is in a different uh, file entirely. I'm going to go ahead and copy or rather cut that out and go back to the middle one where my horse is and paste it in here. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down. 
Uh, you can potentially just drag these from the desktop to the, the file. It may work if they're the right kind of image. Typically, like J JPEGs work fine. Sometimes it's where you got like a PNG with funny opacity or a GIF that's animated or something that causes crashes or just doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and trace my squid. I can trace them off the canvas. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm just have to move them back on. So same activity as before. We drag the box over them. We turn off high pass filter and we hit trace. <coughs> and lo and behold, we have our squid. Now, uh, you have to make the creative decision of how you're going to combine these animals. So I like the idea of a horse with a squid head because I think that's also weird. So I can double click on my horse and you'll notice it shows all the nodes. Now you could be really diligent and right click and delete every single node and this would take forever. Uh, or you can hold down the shift key, very important, hold down the shift key, drag a box around all the nodes you want to delete and right click on one of those nodes and hit delete. Kerblam. Uh, not the delete key on the keyboard, the delete with uh, the right click menu. And I have just made a headless horse. So we're going to take our squid here and I'm going to rotate it around. Oops, this red button here. And you could also, if you wanted to, you could you could go up here to, uh, where is this? Object and mirror. You can flip it horizontally or vertically just like we did in Inkscape. But same drill. I'm going to go ahead and delete part of the squid. I don't think, whoops, got to hold down the shift key to do this properly. I don't think we're going to need the body. Let's right click on that and go to delete point. And now we've got our squid tentacles that I'm going to make come out of our horse. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just kind of get close enough. And these are overlapping. If you were going to cut the sticker like this, it would not work so well. Uh, I can adjust some of my nodes as needed. There we go. Because you'd have the intersection points just be cut to pieces. So instead, I'm going to hold down shift and select both of them. And just like we did in the beginning, to combine those shapes, I'm going to right click and go to weld. And bam, we got squid horse guy thing. So this is very my very scary griffin. And you can go back and adjust things if you want to. You could double click on this guy and, you know, the same way you can delete a bunch of nodes, you can hold down shift and I could like potentially drag these around so I can kind of move the whole thing if I want to. Um, and you could like, I don't know, you could give your horse some, some spikes on the back or, I don't know, Segasaurus horse, whatever it is. Uh, that, that's fine. So this is the, the extent to which you need to work with the, the program to actually make a Griffin sticker. Uh, there are some additional things you could do. Uh, the one optional thing to get into a more complicated form of stickers is you can make a multi-layer sticker. So if you were just going to cut this out of vinyl right now, it would just go cut the red line and bam, you just have a sticker that's shaped like that. But if you wanted to have like a pattern on top of it, maybe uh, we want to have scales or something, I could draw a bunch of little circles like their ellipses like this and cut those out of a different vinyl material and then we would layer later when you make your sticker you actually would layer them on and so you wouldn't put these on while you were cutting it you would sort of cut these separately out of a different color of vinyl so you'd have like a little two inch square down here and maybe a, a bigger square a rectangle up here and you'd cut out this two separate sets of vinyl and combine them together that is a perfectly fine way to make a multi-layer sticker and uh, one of the things that you could do for this. When we do this this activity with kids, I like asking them like, what is your monster? How, you know, what's its name? And how did it come to exist? And why does it have, you know, a squid tentacle arms? Is this horse able to like breathe underwater? Does it just eat human, humans for its living? You know, what? how, how does this work? Uh, it's kind of fun to think about the different survival and evolutionary traits that result in physical forms and how these things would be funny. So. Uh, that is the extent to which I'm showing you Silhouette Studio. There are a billion things you can do with this program. Feel free to explore more. Ask the staff of the Fab Lab. Uh, it is a very fun tool. Uh, check it out. But for now, for the class, this is a good starter activity.